perfect. You're golden. You're the light of my life, my love from forever. In your reflection, I'm perfect. So I'll be looking at you to keep witnessing that I'm perfect. witnessing thy perfection in me Sunday to everybody. Let me ask you a question this morning. Is your life blessed? Yes. Do you wake up every morning knowing that your life is blessed? Yes. Yeah. And if you don't, would you like for it to be more blessed? And even if you feel like your life is blessed, would you like your life to ex be even more blessed? I think we all would. I think we all recognize that we have blessings and that we are blessed in so many ways. There's so many ways that we experience blessing in our lives. And yet, you know, the, the amount of blessings that we have and we experience right now is just a fraction, maybe not even a fraction, of what Spirit wants for you. Do you realize that? We live and move and have our being in the very essence of light and life and love and power and peace. And that, that presence is in every way wanting to pour in and through us amazing blessings. And when we're not seeing that and experiencing that, there are things that we can do. There are things that we can work with. There are ideas and awarenesses that can show us how we can move back into an understanding and an experience of that blessing came across a really nice story this week, and I always like to start off with a, something a little humorous, and I was reminded of a story of a mother who invited some people over for dinner, and at the table, she turned to her six-year-old and daughter and, and said, would you, would you like to say the blessing? And the little girl says, well, I wouldn't know what to say, and the, the, girl, the mother said, well, just say what you hear your mom, say what you hear mom say, say what you hear me say. And she said, oh, God, why did I invite all these people over? <laughs> That's how we oftentimes pray, unfortunately. <laughs> And it's valuable for us to really pay attention to how it is that we are praying and how we are using the, the energy and the quality and the characteristic of blessing. The word blessed really, uh, uh, Eric Butterworth gives a wonderful description of the word bless. And to, to bless is to confer prosperity or abundance on. And so when we bless something, we are actually in the energy of increase. We're in the energy of multiplying. We're in the energy of conferring uh, that to be, in some way, a blessing to us and in our lives. And so when we uh, are participating in that awareness and that energy of blessing, we are participating in that amazing and wonderful flow and recognition of the presence and the power of the divine in our experiences in our lives. And what we have a tendency to do, unfortunately, is we have a tendency to focus our attention on all of those blessings that we think are not there. And you know, the amazing thing is, when we focus our attention and our awareness and our, our, our consciousness 
on what we think is not there, the universe is so amazingly loving that it actually gives us more of what's not there. So what do I mean by that? We actually focus our attention on lack and limitation. And the universe says, you need to, obviously you're wanting to experience more of that. And it won't necessarily, you know, make you change your mind until you kind of get to the place. We, and, and I know this for a fact. <laughs> it won't help you change your mind until you see that that's not what you want. Had an interesting week. Had a wonderful week. Had a powerful week. And earlier on this week, I caught myself really being caught up in focusing on what was missing in my life and was feeling pretty down earlier part of the week. You know, I do that every now and then. I get to have a pity party every now and then. <laughs> Anybody else know what I'm talking about? We do that occasionally. We kind of go, well, okay, what's, you know, we, we all of a sudden start to pay attention to all those things that we think are supposed to be in our life that are not showing up, or haven't shown up yet at least. And I caught myself in that place earlier this week. And, and it's funny because the amazing thing is the more I found myself in that space, you know, the, the more down I got. Can you believe that? <laughs> and the more down I got, the more I felt justified in looking at all the things that were missing in my life. You know that place? We've all been in that place. We've all done that. But, you know, we do have the ability to pay attention and to shift. So it's interesting because uh, as I was in this place, I, you know, spirit has a wonderful way of also, even in the middle of that, giving us awarenesses and giving us lessons and showing us things in our lives. And I came across the word, for some reason, I came across this word bless and blessing and to be blessed. And um, the more I looked at that, I thought, well, wait a minute, let, you know, what is it that I'm doing here? And am I using the power of blessing to bless what I don't have? I think we do that sometimes. I came across another wonderful story. It's the story of two old friends who bumped into each other. Uh, they wanted, ran into each other one day on the street, and they hadn't seen each other in a while. And one of them was really walking along the street looking really forlorn and almost on the verge of tears, you could tell. And his friend says, well, what in the world, what has the world done to you? What in the world is going on with you, my friend? And the old fellow says, well, let me tell you. Three weeks ago, an uncle died and left me $40,000. And the man says, well, that's a lot of money. I'm sorry your uncle died, but that's a lot of money. And yeah, but two weeks ago, a cousin of mine, I, I never even really knew this cousin. I, I never knew he died, and he left me $85,000. Well, sounds like, it sounds like you've been blessed, the other fellow says. And he says, yeah, well, you don't understand. Last week, my, my great aunt passed away, and I inherited almost a quarter of a million dollars. And the man was really confused, and he says, well, then why do you look so glum? Well, this week, there was absolutely nothing. I'm sorry, but I sometimes resemble that remark, I have to be honest. Sometimes we are so get caught up in thinking that we're supposed to experience all of our blessings in a certain way and that we're supposed to have things flow in a certain way. And when, we don't, when they don't flow in that way, we all of a sudden get this idea somehow that we're not experiencing blessing. But if we really think about it, that's simply our understanding and our interpretation of what's going on in our life, isn't it? And so as I was really looking at this idea of being blessed and being blessing, of course, I was reminded of the words of Jesus in the Beatitudes. And the Beatitude, the word Beatitude really literally means blessings. It really means to experience blessing. And I always was reminded of this wonderful work. How many of you are familiar with this work? This is a work called The Sermon on the Mount by Emmett Fox. Very, very, if you've not read this before, I highly recommend it. It really gives you some wonderful awarenesses and some insights into not only what this word blessing really means, but how we can really move into an energy and a consciousness of blessing in all aspects of our lives. You see, he starts off, Jesus talks about and teaches in Matthew, 
He teaches eight different Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are ways that we can tune into and experience more of the blessings of the divine in our life. He says that Jesus concerned himself exclusively with the teaching of general principles, and these general principles always had to do with mental states. For he knew that if one's mental state is right, everything else must be right also. Whereas if these are wrong, nothing else in, is going to be right. So if we're not in the right mental frame to be able to see and recognize and acknowledge and, and, and uh, uh, and, and honor the blessings that are available to us, then we're not going to experience that as a blessing. We're going to see it as something other than that. You see, the Sermon on the Mount really is a way of showing us an attitude and a way of thinking and a way of seeing and a way of being that allows us to tune into the energy of blessing in our lives. What is blessing according to the Bible? Well, it's a, a, it is, a, Webster says it's the act or words of, that one uses that blesses an, a, another, um, or a thing conducive to happiness or welfare. It is actually a, a conferring of an honor of, of well-being on yourself and or others. And I think about that idea of well-being, and I, I'm also reminded of this wonderful work, two of my favorite works, the, the Sermon on the Mount and Ask and It Is Given by uh, Esther and Hicks. There's an amazing correlation between what's being taught in the Sermon on the Mount by Emmett Fox and the teachings of the law of attraction that's been taught by many, but also I think more, none more clearly in many ways than, than the Esther Hicks works. It's powerful stuff. And so we look at this idea of blessing, it's important for us to recognize that there's an energy and a vibration that is an energy and vibration of blessing. When we talk about energy and vibration, we're talking about mental, emotional energy. You know, our thoughts are vibrations. You realize that, right? Our thoughts actually hold energy, and they contain energy, and they actually have and are in and of themselves Charles Fillmore basically said, thoughts are things, and they have a life of themselves. And so the very thoughts that we hold in our energy and our awareness are there, and they actually have a reality in and of themselves. So let me be clear, it's the thoughts that we hold in our energy and hold in our awareness that tend to come into our experiences. And so I want to talk about, we're going to do some exploration of some of these lessons that Jesus was trying to teach us about what it means to be in well-being, what it means to experience blessing, to be blessed. And as I look at these teachings, and I look at Charles uh, 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 M. Fox, and he starts off with, of course, the first of the Beatitudes. Find my spot here. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This has always been, I think, a lot of, there's been some mystery about these understandings. Because um, the, many have interpreted this that you have to be, um, it's been misinterpreted to say blessed are the poor. And I'm going to suggest to you in many ways that's the exact opposite of what Jesus was trying to teach. It wasn't, he didn't say blessed are the poor. He said blessed are the poor in spirit. And so I think it's valuable for us to explore this attitude of heart and mind that, me, that blessed are the poor in spirit really reflects. He's talking from an idiom of that language of that time. And the idiom of that language of that time reflects this idea of poor in spirit simply to mean humble, to have humility, and to think about this idea of humility as simply, it means that you are teachable, 
that you're open, that you're not necessarily stuck in your own limited way of viewing things, that you're not stuck in, in the things that you've learned from the past, that you're not stuck in a particular pattern of ideas and belief systems, that you're not trying to, uh, when someone is poor in spirit, they're not trying to defend a particular idea, belief system, their own, or their own limitations, their own blocks. And oftentimes when we pray, when we pray here on Sunday mornings, one of the things we do is we form a circle. And one of the things that we always affirm is it is not I, but it is the Spirit of God within that does the work. And so being poor of spirit really is being open to allowing the presence of the divine to work in and through our energy and our consciousness. So it's developing an energy of openness and willingness to see and experience something from a greater perspective from a greater vision, from a greater awareness of the possibilities of how something might be good in our lives. When we look at different experiences, sometimes we see them as challenges, and sometimes we see them as tragedies. And many times those things that we see as challenges and tragedies, if we really take the time to look for and be open in prayer with whatever that might be, we may find that even in the midst of those circumstances and situation, there's something that will come through that that will be in some way a blessing in our lives. I know for Julie and I, one of the things that I, she shared with me, and she, I don't think she'll mind me sharing, is that one of the most blessed things that she had happened to her was getting laid off from a particular wonderful job that she had that we both thought that she would retire in. And I can tell you that had she not been laid off from that job, we wouldn't be here today experiencing the blessings of you in our lives. We know this for truth. We know that had that blessed thing not happened, we would still be there. And we would be enjoying, I'm sure, the blessings of that. But that wasn't really the blessing that was in store for us. There was a blessing that came out of that that really both of us be, began to really honor and, and recognize and appreciate. And one of the things I have to say about Miss Julie is that she's a, she's a wonderful, you know, she's a wonderful teacher for me and a wonderful example in so many ways. Even those times when she, I don't like what she's teaching me. She, <laughs> <laughs> but she really was able to take some time to grieve that experience and to honor the grief of that experience, which interestingly enough kind of gets us into our second beatitude. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so she was able to grieve that experience, and it was very soon and very quick that she was able to take some time to go back and, and take some time to study and reread many of the spiritual principles, the practice she read, reread. I remember uh, spiritual economics was a big influence for you. Catherine Ponder, and she was rereading some of these things. And it was very quick that she was able to turn her awareness around and recognize that, oh, okay, thank you, God. What's next? What's next? What is the blessing that is coming out of this experience? And she was able to bless that experience. It's a process. It didn't happen overnight. She will admit that to you, I'm sure. It doesn't happen overnight. But sometimes when we began to make that shift of blessing whatever the circumstance and situation is and recognize that something is in that for us, something is there for us. Yes, we want to honor the second beatitude, which is, yes, we do. It's, it's, it's valuable. It's normal. It's, it's okay. It's valuable to mourn a particular experience. And one of the things about that is to recognize that, you know, when we... When we find ourselves in an experience of letting go of something, there's, almost, there's always a sense of, of uh, feeling of loss in some way. You know, if you lose your favorite, you know, if you lose your favorite comb even sometimes, you know, you kind of go, oh, where is that? You know, even just if it's mom, you know, a moment, if you, anytime there's a sense or a feeling of loss, there's, there's oftentimes a feeling of, and a need to, to grieve to some extent whether it be a relationship, whether it be a job, whether it be a, a church home, whether it be a, a, you know, any of those kinds of losses that we experience in our lives, even if it's a death of someone that we dearly love, ultimately we will find that if we are open to the possibility, there's a way that we can truly tune into 
a greater good that's already trying to pour itself in and through us in those, ter- those times and those circumstances and those ser- situations. So yes, blessed, blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Emmett Fox has a wonderful insight and awareness on this. Someone in our question and answer last week wanted to hear, understand a little bit more of the metaphysical ideas and, and uh, uh, teachings of Jesus, and this is a great resource for that if you're interested in knowing really more of the metaphysical spiritual uh, principles that Jesus was teaching. So I recommend this work to you, and we're going to do some more with this. But when we think about this idea of blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will inherit the kingdom of heaven, one of the things that Emmett Fox points out is excuse me, the kingdom of earth, they will, they, they will inherit the earth. And one of the things he points out is the earth that they're talking about is not just the ground that we walk on. And it's not just this physical planet that we're talking about. But he says metaphysically the earth really represents any of our material manifestations. Anything that we are experiencing, anything that we are manifesting out here in the material world. He points out that ultimately all of these are pointing to an understanding, are based upon a particular key. The way to understand these teachings is to understand that we are in the process right now of continually creating our experiences out here in the world. We talk about that in terms of our second principle that we have in unity, which is our thoughts and feelings create our experiences in the world. And so when we're working with this understanding of blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the earth, what he's saying is that they shall take ownership of and they shall basically have control and mastery over their process of manifesting whatever's going on in your life and world. So to be poor in spirit means that you are one who is open and teachable to this understanding that what's going on out here is a reflection of what's going on in here. And so when we really look at the circumstances of our lives, one of the great phrases that I love that Eric Butterworth Butterworth teaches is, when I see a circumstance or situation in my life, the most wonderful and powerful question that you can ask is, not, not what's in this for me, but what's in this from me. And if you think about a particular situation that you're, you're experiencing in your life right now that you see as an experience as a difficulty or a challenge, it can be valuable for you to take some time to meditate and reflect on this question. What's in this from me? Now, please hear me. This is not about metaphysical spiritual blame. We're pretty good at that. We do a lot. lot. Oh, yeah. Not only did I create this in my life, but I'm a, a, you know, we kind of get back into the old school, I'm a worthless sinner because I did. This is not how that works. And it really is really, really not about trying to figure out how someone else created what's going on in their life and making sure you point that out for them. So I want you to hear this for me very clearly, please. Our job is not to point out where someone else is creating challenges or difficulties in their lives. Our work is to really tune into an awareness of the blessings that are available in and of and through us in our lives. And we attune ourselves to that spirit of the divine. When we align ourselves with a knowing that there is a power and a presence that's always available and always working in and through us to to move us into, or back into, you might say, an awareness of our blessedness. We are created in the image and after the likeness of the divine. We are created as a blessing in and of itself. You were created out of the very blessing that God is. That's the essence of who, of who and what each and every one of us is. And our work is really not to, it's interesting because it's, it's more like peeling layers of an onion. It's more like taking away those things in our thinking and our feeling and our, our programming that have caught us up in what we think is somehow missing in our experience in our lives. 
And we're willing, when we're willing to let those go, when we're willing to shift, when we're willing to let go of the stinking thinking, you know what I'm talking about? When we're willing to let go of the stinking thinking, what we find is that there's an essence and a beauty and a, and a, a clarity that comes through, through our times of meditation, through our prayers, through our interactions with those in our lives. When we start seeing others in a light of recognizing the blessing that they are here for us in some way. You know, and the other powerful part of that is, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in blessing the, the good that you see and you experience in your life. Blessing what it is that you want to experience more of. These are the principles of law of attraction that is what you put your energy onto in a positive way. You draw to you more. You will attract more of that in your experiences. Well, I think it's also valuable to recognize and to give thanks for and to bless those things that you no longer want in your life. And how, how do I, what do I mean by that? There, you know, I am just so grateful that I, there's so many things in my life that I don't have. If you think about it, that we can be so grateful for the challenges that are not in our lives, the difficulties that we're not experiencing. We are, we are so blessed in so many ways that we have a tendency to forget how blessed we are by, not, by what we don't have. And I don't even have to give you examples of that. Every one of you just are going, yep. <laughs> You're all just nodding your heads. You know what I'm talking about. You know the blessings that you no longer have, the blessings that you don't have that maybe some others perhaps are experiencing in their lives. And so it's valuable to, to, to give thanks in those circumstances and to recognize the wonderful blessings of not having some things that you really don't want in the first place. And a part of the work of blessing also is learning to, learning to move and shift your energy in such a way that you can release and let go of those things that are no longer a blessing in your life, that may have been a blessing at one time in your life. Perhaps it's a relationship. Perhaps it's a job. Perhaps it's a particular way of thinking and believing in some way. And so part of our work is to move into that energy and that awareness of blessing. Getting back to this idea of blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Emmett Fox says, mourning or sorrow is not in and its, itself a good thing, for the will of God is that everyone should experience happiness, joy, and success. And Jesus said, I come that they may have life and that they might have it abundantly. Nevertheless, trouble and suffering are often extremely useful because many people will not bother to learn that the truth until they are driven to do so by sorrow, by failure, and, you know, sometimes, you know, it realizes sometimes we're not able to recognize our stinking thinking until we see it out here in the world. Isn't that true? Sometimes we don't recognize the things that, we're, that are going on inside of us until we actually see it out here face to face. Sometimes until we really are confronted with the difficulties and challenges in the way that we're seeing and looking at the world. Sometimes we're not in a place where we can recognize that until something shows up to remind us that we can shift, that there's a different way of looking at this, that, that there's something else that can go on for us in our lives. Sooner or later, every human being will have to discover the truth about God and make his, make his own contact with him at first hand. He will have to acquire the understanding of truth, which will set him free once and for all, from our three-dimensional limitations and their, their con this is an interesting word, concommitments. Um, most people will not undertake the search for the divine wholeheartedly unless driven there by trouble of some, some kind. You know, it's just an, uh, it's just some, it's an, an acknowledgment of... Uh, uh, I think it's just an acknowledgment. And many who are... are uh, you know, unity is very much aligned with, with the 12-step programs, many of you are aware, and, and it's just a wonderful recognition in those 12-step programs that sometimes we have to 
reach a place within ourselves where we experience so much of the challenges in our lives that we're willing to say, look, I give up. I can, you know, I'm, I, what I've been doing isn't working. And I think that's true from a, a spiritual metaphysical level. And the reality is the 12-step program is actually a very powerful program for any of us who are, interestingly enough, we are all addicted in some ways to our limited stinking thinking, aren't we? And I, I, you know, my stinking thinking is better than your stinking thinking, right? <laughs> Except when it's not, of course. <laughs> so we all have these times where we really need to take stock and look at what's coming in and we're holding in our thoughts and our feelings and our energy and our consciousness in life and, and really pay attention to what's working and what's not working and be open to shifting that into a different way of seeing things and being open to allowing something greater to work in our lives and something more than our own limiting ways of viewing and th seeing things. When we find ourselves going through difficulties and challenges, we can be assured that in the very act of going through those, if we are open and receptive, if we are willing, we will find that there's something greater at work in our lives something greater in our experiences. And though we mourn through these experiences, we will find that there's a spirit that will come in and open our awareness to greater possibilities of good. Pardon me one second. So one of the things I wanted to tie in was also uh, this idea of blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. You know, sometimes we think about this idea of meek. How many of you saw the, uh, the, the uh, Lord of the Rings series, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, or you maybe read The, uh, the, the Hobbit how many of you read The Hobbit or seen the movie The Hobbit? Most of you haven't. You guys know uh, Smeagol? Remember Smeagol? I'm sorry, but sometimes when I have thought of the idea of the word meek, I always thought of Smeagol for some reason. <laughs> you know, it seems like, uh, you know, this groveling kind of uh, lowly kind of um, being or creature that, you know, this just seems to be, uh, uh, you know, kind of groveling kind of person. And I'm going to suggest to you the idea of meek is not that at all. To be meek really actually means to be open and receptive, but it also really means very clearly the word allowing. When you are meek, you're simply in a place of allowing. It's one of the most important words that the Esther Hicks works talks about. You know, we don't manifest based upon all of our, uh, how shall I put it, we have a tendency to think that we can make things come into our lives. You know what I'm talking about? We have a tendency to think that when we're, we're manifesting that we can, that by the very act of creation that we're making something happen. And I'm going to suggest to you that that's one of the things that oftentimes gets in our way because we somehow think that we're making something happen. And I'm going to suggest to you that that's a, it's a little bit backwards. Now, don't get me wrong. It does take, require persistence. It does require persistence of thought and, and ideas and feeling and energy. It does uh, require perseverance. It requires you to stay with a, a way of, of, of thinking in a, in a positive and creative way in order to experience positive life experiences. And so it does require effort and energy on our part to really be a part of creating in a way that is a blessing in our experience. And so there is something that does require from us, but the moment that we think that it's ours, to, that we're in the process of creating it, we're actually part of the problem. We're one of the thing, that's one of the things that gets us blocked. So we're not really ourselves doing the creating. In a very real sense, we are allowing creation to happen through us. And that's what the law of attraction really is about. It's really an allowing of the good 
to be in our energy, it's allowing ourselves to experience the blessings in such a way that we are simply being open to the possibilities of, of good in our lives. And oftentimes, and this question came up last week in our question and answer, and it's a really viable distinction in some ways. And it's the difference between our setting our intentions and goals and, um, and just simply allowing you know, the whatever, the universe to bless us in whatever way. You know, both of them are valuable and important, I believe. I think it's important for us to set clear intentions of what it is you want to experience in your life, and you're really giving a very clear signal and message to the universe of what it is that you want to experience more of. And then once you've done that, you turn it over. You let it go. And you allow the universe to bless you in whatever way is highest and best. And you allow spirit to flow in such a way that you can experience this or something even better, right? And it's one of the most valuable ways for us to really, it's one of the most valuable attitudes. Someone actually, I was trying to remember who I got this from, but one of our early metaphysical teachers called the, the be attitudes is the attitudes of being. They're the attitudes of our being. I also like the phrase, the be happy attitudes. I like that one as well. So the Beatitudes really are ways of us tuning into a, a, an inner feeling and sense and awareness, an energy, a vibration that allows us to tune into the vibration of the blessings that are already available to us and already in the process of being flow, flowed through us in such a way that we can recognize and see it. And our work is to practice those things, those ways of looking, those ways of seeing, so that we are tuned into the energy and vibration of the blessings that are already available to us. Make sense? And so when we think about these blessings that are already available to us, we are being given instructions on in how we can tune into those in ways that really allow us to um, not only be a blessing, but also to, uh, to be blessed, but also to be a blessing. See, the very act of our life is a blessing to us, right? I know you've heard this idea before. What we do with that is also our blessing to the universe. And so part of our work is to not only be open and receptive and to be allowing of blessings in our experience, but for us to use our energy, our thoughts, our feelings, our consciousness to participate in and to be a blessing to the world. So how can we do that? How can we be more of a blessing to our world? How can we be more of a blessing in our lives? How can we answer that question of what is mine to do and to be and to bless today, tomorrow, next week? It really does begin on, a, on an inner level, doesn't it? The, really the question is, what am I looking, not so much what am I looking at, but what am I looking through? What is the, the thoughts and the feelings and the attitudes and the energy that I am holding, not only about myself, but about others in my life and world? Am I a blessing? in their lives, and if I'm not, why not? Am I still trying to get them to be a blessing to me? <laughs> and if I'm doing that, if I am in the energy of trying to get someone else to be a blessing to me, am I being a blessing to them? You follow me? What are my thoughts and feelings and attitudes that I'm holding about others in my life and world? What are the thoughts and energies and attitudes that I'm holding about world experiences, our world leaders? What are energies and attitudes that I'm holding about the neighbor down the street that, whose dog, you know, you know the one? <laughs> I, and, and I have to say, what I, I really was reminded of this this morning, about 4.20 this morning. What are the energies and attitudes that I'm holding about my cats who like to wake up at 4.20 in the morning <laughs> and make sure that, you know, everybody else in the house is awake 
at that time. I was having a challenge with that this morning, but I was able to kind of shift it and go, okay, well, bless you, you know. I had to shift my energy a bit. How often do we have to be a blessing in our lives by being a blessing to others? I would say it's an ongoing process. It's something that we are called to do and to really experience more of the Beatitudes, to experience more of the blessings in our lives, we need to see ourselves as a blessing and we need to be willing to honor that energy, that thought energy, that vibration of sending out positive thoughts and feelings to those in our lives, especially those that are closest to us. But not only those closest to us, but those around the world, those who have different ideas and views and experiences. Doesn't mean we have to agree with their view, their perspective, their position. We were having a conversation last night. I remember it was, I don't remember who we were talking to, but someone said, you know, the moment, oh yeah, some new people that we met last night, really interesting folks from, that go to another Unity Church. And, um, and they said, one of the guys says, you know, Everybody has a position, right? We all have a position on things. And the moment that you take a position, you can bet, and this is what came to me, I said, yeah, the moment that you take a position, you can bet there's going to be opposition. Right? And what I mean by taking a position, when you take a position and you say, this is the way it is, I know the truth, and you make sure that everybody else knows that you know the truth, right? <laughs> you can bet there's going to be someone who has a different position. And we see that as our opposition. And the reality is there really ultimately is no opposition in the universe. There's only the truth. And you and I are part of that. And we can align ourselves with that, not with necessarily saying that I'm right and Anybody that doesn't agree with that is wrong. But really tuning into an understanding of our energy that we are holding <laughs> in our lives for those around us. And so our work this week, our homework, is to really think about those first couple of Beatitudes. We're going to do some more of this exploring of the Beatitudes next week as well and explore some of the other attitudes of being in our lives. So I invite you to really think about what we've talked about this week and really reflect on how am I being a blessing in my life, in my world? How can I be more of a blessing? We asked the question at the beginning, would you like to experience more blessings in your life? This is one of the biggest steps. Ask yourself, how can I be a blessing? And I can tell you the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven will open up to show you ways that you can be a blessing and how you will be blessed by the very act of following up on that question. Have a fantastic week, and we'll have some more fun with this next week. God bless you all. Good to see you. Blessings. So let's just breathe into that space and that awareness, that imagery, that awareness. The ability to move forward and to allow, to let go, to trust. And to allow an energy, a light, a consciousness of blessing to dwell in our hearts. There's a wonderful southern saying, bless your heart. Take a moment now to do just that. Take a moment to bless the place where you are most open and receptive and connected to the spirit of love, of grace, of peace, of passion. To send wonderful positive energies and thoughts both to your physical heart and to your spiritual heart.
take the moment now to be tender and gentle. And know that if there are places where you are mourning or grieving in some way, <coughs> be open and receptive to the comfort of spirit, to the love that God is. And know that the very act of sending love to yourself is also allowing the love that God is to flow in you and through you as love for your very self, for your very being. And as you allow that energy of blessing to be in your heart, be willing to allow that energy to expand and grow. To not only bless yourself, to bless your physical being, to bless your mind, your thinking, your feeling, but to expand out and bless all of those situations and circumstances that you find yourself in. And be open and receptive to hearing and feeling and knowing what blessing Spirit is trying to bring into your light and your awareness. Be open to asking that question. What's in this from me? From my subconscious, from my unconscious, what do I need to know from this? What blessings am I not seeing? What blessings can I see more of? Continuing to breathe into the heart space. Allow that spirit to enliven, to enlighten, and yes, to bless your consciousness with an understanding of how you are participating in the blessings of the divine. And just let a willingness to be present in your heart and mind and thinking, all levels of being, to an alignment of the process, the consciousness of blessing. Blessed Spirit, I am open and receptive to the blessings that I am, that I have, and that I am here to be in this world. And I say yes. Yes. deep breath now. Take another nice deep breath and when you're ready, gently open your eyes. And so it is. <laughs>